Hi everyone. I have a surprise tonight. I'm going to do something I haven't done in a long time. Think prophetically. It's been busy this winter, but I'm glad the summer came. The spring, the beautiful weather outside here in Littleton, New Hampshire. And tonight I'm going to share with you prophetic painting and worship um, as I play music. And, um... It'll be different for a lot of you, but you will begin to um, see how um, the Lord speaks through me through art. And you, some of you are artists, and those of you who think you're not, um, God can give you vision of circles, and you draw them, and you put specific colors on there, and all of a sudden there's a message. <laughs> so I'm going to share with you a song, because the message I want to bring to you tonight is about rest. So many challenges in life, and life is really busy. I know y'all know that. It keeps us so busy sometimes we're fighting to get rest. We shouldn't have our schedule so busy, our life so hectic that we're fighting to get rest. That means you're stressed. You're on overload. One thing I know about not overcoming things in life, especially grief. The rest that I talk about a lot of times on my Facebook page is um, is talking about a peace of mind, a place where you can let go of everything that is hindering your joy, your peace, your happiness. And, you know, sometimes it can be good things that are happening and changing in your life, but they're causing you a lot of stress. You're not sure, clear of the path of the way things are going to work out, so you tend to stress. So the greatest thing that God has given us is in an abundant life is a peace of mind and to know the truth that will set us free and to give us a rest. That rest comes more and more the more you get to know God and the more that you um, learn his voice and how he speaks to you. Um, mine, is, it's not an audible voice, it's just a knowing uh, for most people, that's what it is. There have been times when I've had God wake me up. Um, I've heard knocking or I've heard um, a voice uh, believing that um, it was God in faith, you know, answered to it, responded, and saw God move on my behalf. So tonight, I'm going to show you a prophetic art. I'm not going to keep you long, but I want you to experience... Um, how God speaks to 
the arts in a different way. Some people can listen to their favorite music and um, paint a portrait or a painting of something, a vision or even a, a drawing or a picture that they have saved. And um, that too is meditation and that too is healing. But what I'm talking about is prophetic art. So prophetic art is where um, you literally are just listening to music and you are um, seeking the Lord um, for wisdom or maybe just for peace or maybe um, God has put it on your heart to sit down and paint, which he keeps telling me. And for months I've been taking care of my dad and you know there's times where it has been intense where possibly I, I could have painted or I could have played my music but still we're human and we want to sort things out ourselves but in the end I always come back to the place that God taught me how to hold it all together through him and have my thoughts be his thoughts and um when I say that, I don't mean manipulation. I mean his thoughts of peace, his thoughts of joy, his thoughts of good things. Because the word says, um, which is, you know, the truth, that um, God wishes for you to prosper in every area of your life, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, and financially. In Revelations 5, 10 through 14, it speaks of the things that Jesus won for us when he... Um, when he died upon that cross and rose again, it speaks of wealth, honor, glory, praise, wisdom, power, and strength. And um, I think I got them all. Wealth, honor, glory, praise, wisdom, power, strength. Yes, I always count them out because I feel like I'm missing one. Um, but anyway, um, so those things are supposed to be in our lives. We already have the um, ability to receive those things abundantly. But if there's an area where you're not prospering in those things... Um, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, financially, you'll find that um, that's a place that God really wants to bring you to to know more about his character. So tonight, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to paint. I'm going to paint prophetic art. I'm going to turn on my favorite um, soaking video, um, music video from YouTube. It's by Jason Upton, which is a phenomenal worship leader. And um, it's well, it's not actually Jason Upton doing it, but it's a it's a instrumental about a song. I'm just gonna put it on, and let's see where we go with this painting. And yes, I'm going to sing with it because that's what I do. I called you to worship me, my child. First time I ever heard this, that's all I kept hearing. I called you to worship me. Called you to worship me, worship me, worship me, worship me. You're called to worship me, my child. For you are holy, said the Lord. You are holy, says the Lord. I call you now. To sing my praises, lead my people into the glory. So blue is the color that the Lord was saying to me to start with. I heard it from the Holy Spirit. Blue means wisdom in the Bible. It means that you're hearing from God. No, I didn't make that up, and no, I didn't say that because that's what I'm trying to present tonight. It actually was what God had laid upon my heart. These are acrylics, and they're um, they're not what I usually paint with, but it's um, a, a um, something that I want to get used to. So I'm trying that tonight. So Oh, 
righteousness. You know one could have done what you've done for me. Father, Holy Spirit, Son in me. You are my child. Worship me. Sit in my rest and worship me. No weapon for me against you shall prosper because of your sacrifice in your love you offer. Worship me. So yellow is the next color. I'm just kind of just trying to go with the flow to hear what the Lord is saying. If you put something specific on my heart to draw or to paint a circle or a square, I do. Right now he's just telling me to put on the color and he's giving me yellow. Mm -hmm. means glory. The glory of God means that there's a presence that of God that is in you, that is surrounding you, that brings you peace with inside, but it also brings you brings others peace that are around you. And so as I'm listening to this worship music, and I might need to turn it down a little bit. I'm not sure if you can hear me on that. As I'm listening to this worship music, and I'm painting, and as God's telling me what to paint with, I'm beginning to calm down and, and come into a restful state more than I was. I can feel the presence of God in me. I can feel the Holy Spirit. And I'm beginning to see something come and manifest out of this picture. When I say manifest, I mean it starts to look like something. Uh, when we talk about manifestation of, of the glory of God, we're talking about the, the actual presence of God showing up. And you're seeing, um, you can see spiritual things. Some people see angels, some people see healings, some people see, people have seen gold dust, people have just have felt the presence of God. Um, it's all different for everybody. Um, God is spirit. And we worship him in spirit and truth. And that spirit and truth helps us to live in this world and overcome things in this world. It helps us to not fear. It helps us to not worry. It helps us to not... Um, be anxious. It helps us to not run to other things to um, give us happiness. It helps us to sort out things in our life that have happened, tragedies, um, even, um, you know, tragedies can be anything depending on the person, but um, even, you know, it helps you to hear from God for wisdom and instruction. Um, years in my life, I've always... Um, have these, these uh, issues with making my own decisions and going my own way, and um, that bothered a lot of people, but I didn't have a fear of stepping out into the unknown. And I find now, more than ever, it's so important for me to step out in the unknown, because with God, all things are possible. And with God, I've had to really trust Him in things that I had no idea what He was doing. I couldn't figure it out. And that's kind of how I think. Um, prophetic art can be people drawing specific things and seeing visions in the heavens. For me, I think I see the spiritual activity 
of color you know it's the spiritual activity of energy more so than I really see um, beings you know like angels or or you know I have I have seen um, Jesus in my room um, with angels all around me and that was when God was really releasing me to um, a higher level in ministry and really setting people free um, which is a spiritual work as well as a physical work because you can financially set somebody free you can um, physically set somebody free by you know they get out of prison or um, they're tied down to something but you also can set people free spiritually and spiritually setting somebody free is, is quite an experience um, for those who have been bound in pain and suffering. So what I'm feeling and I'm seeing is an outpouring. This picture is talking about the outpouring of the Spirit. And um, God is saying to me that He wants to speak to so many of you. Or I should say, He's always speaking to so many of you, but He wants you to literally hear Him. You know, when we get into the color red, the color of red as, um, represents Jesus. And it has to do with um, the blood of Christ. And it says that, you know, God will set you free and he'll restore you. That he has, there's a resurrecting power that comes from Jesus in your life and the word that can set you free from lies you believe, from experiences you've been through, from uh, torment, from uh, tragedy, from storms. Um, I think I already said that one because I'm trying to focus and pain at the same time. And, and, um, I see it. I see it. Thank you, Jesus. So, it's been a really stressful day for me, for sure. Um, a lot going on. Really good things, you know. But, you know, I have friends and loved ones that I am concerned about and love very much that are going through some stuff. And um, it's hard for me because... Some of the stuff I know what they're going through and other stuff I know only God knows. And I desire for them to seek the Lord more in those places. But I can't do it for them. And that's really hard sometimes, especially when you're really close to people, you know? And you really love them. So the blue that I'm doing is a baby. In the spirit realm, that's what's going on. There's a wave. It's called, some people say in church it's a wave of glory. But it's actually a, a wave of glory. It's an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Trying to um, get you to awaken to um, the presence of God and the healing that he is trying to outpour to you, uh, whatever you're going through, um, is always trying to talk to us and show us a better way how to deal with things in life or uh, a better way to think about things in life that uh, really will change our circumstances, will change um, our heart, um, will begin to give us a better um, understanding of even ourselves or even in the moment just a perfect peace beyond our understanding so that we can sleep at night or so that we can function and be able to do what we have to do each and every day which is not easy now i've had i know you got some of you have seen my um artwork because i've had things that have um i've painted that were um actual drawings of things you know but this right here i'm seeing the voice of god is speaking 
and he's speaking, and as he's speaking, the waters are moving. Now, you know that the human body is made up of water, a um, good percentage of water. And so what happens in the spirit realm is when the spirit of God moves, um, you begin to feel the presence of God. So there's a river that's flowing from the voice of God that is trying to bring you a message and is trying to help you to understand what you're going through. Some of you um, know the Lord, love the Lord, and have known him for a long time, but you're you know, trying to fathom in your head, where are you now? Or why haven't, um, why am I going through this again? Or why am I going through this at all? Um, where's the God that I serve? Uh, I think it was Psalms 115 that says, um, you know, God, where are you? And he's talking about um, people are looking at me and saying, where is your God? You know, this God that you talk about. And sometimes there are circumstances, situations where the only way that people can see God is through the way you handle your relationship with the Lord. Because when they see the power of God moving you in your circumstance, they get healed. Their faith is encouraged. They start to believe. They start to know that He is really God and He is there for you. And then they begin to want to know Him more and more. I'm kind of doing some little... I see some little um, waves like this. This is what I see. I see waves. I see waves. I see waves. And I see the waves taking over you. I see the waves coming into your life and healing you and restoring you. Whatever it is that you're facing today, I'm going to tilt this a little bit more so you can see. Hopefully the light's not shining in the wrong direction. I can turn it a different way. Maybe I can even close this and then you can really see. There you go. So the Bible talks about rivers of living water. So you see in the blood of Jesus, the word says the blood of Jesus covers you. That means it protects you, it puts you in a secret place so that you can get through a secret circumstance or situation. So you can understand the thing. Or protecting you from your enemies. The gold is the glory of God that is over you, that covers you, has your back, and, and is, is shining upon you, opening up um, opportunities to be set free, opportunities for a new job, opportunities for a, a miracle to happen. And, you know, like, miracles can be anything. They can be uh, a miracle to see, a miracle to walk, um, a miracle of a, a new car, or debt paid off, or a miracle of... Your son coming home you haven't heard from in five years. Uh, someone being delivered off drugs. A miracle can come in so many, so many different avenues. But the green in the picture is healing. And so God, in his ultimate wisdom, is sending down healing. And he's shining his glory upon you and through the blood of Jesus, which is what? The word of God. So getting to know the Lord and how he's talking to you and under, letting him lead you, ordering your steps in the word, meaning the Bible, ordering your steps in there. He wants to show you something in the word that is about you because he will begin to reveal to you the life that he has planned for you. Although there has been distractions and distortions and hard times, those were not from God. That's called being in a world, living in the world, but not of the world. Because this is a world of sin and bad things happen here. And that's really what Satan opened us up to. To um, experience good and evil. And then what happens to the word is it's going to, the word is going to pour out upon you. And the word is going to change your circumstance. It's going to change your heart. It's going to change your mind. It's going to change your body. It's going to give you a freedom that you didn't know you had. It's going to begin to turn things around for you. But the only way that these things can happen, mostly for you, in, in peace, in sound mind, is for you to spend time with the Lord and allow God to speak to you. Allow God to tell you what he's doing. See, I see rivers are living water flowing and it's coming back up. It's coming back up. It's coming back up. It's flowing back over. It's flowing back over. It's circles. 
circles. So although it looks to some people like it's a childhood painting, yet there's a message upon this. And this is a very subtle art piece that God has given me. Um, although it is very subtle and looks like it's to someone who is watching this, it's touching their heart. And they're beginning to see, wow, God is really big. How can he talk to me through her, through this painting? And, you know, all these things, spiritual God, um, all these things coming down and overflowing. See, it's overtaking you. It's overtaking you. How can God do that? Well, because he is God. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And you'll find that the more that you have relationship with the Lord, the more you'll begin to get healed in areas that you didn't even know you were struggling with. That's what happened to me. And that's what happened to other people that I've talked to. There are subconscious, you know, psychology will tell you, our subconscious mind will keep and store data of experience we went through. And sometimes we've never remembered those experiences, but yet they have, they are affecting our lives. And, um, and it's stored in our subconscious and it's, it's, it can be, um, major destruction, especially if you went through a devastating time and you had to overcome that and come up out of a situation that you didn't understand. Um, and that's kind of how God, um, began to reveal to me for healing, um, from my mother's passing. And, you know, I, I, I always bring that up because I know that was the icing on the cake. That was the thing that took me out. That was the thing that really tested, um, put God to the test, I would say. So, um, you know, really began to be something that God, um, what the enemy meant for evil, God meant for good. And he turned it around. I mean, look at my art and music today. I never thought that I would be doing prophetic artwork. I never thought that I would be doing uh, writing music and playing guitar. And um, my whole life has changed. My whole outlook on life. There was a time when I didn't think I could go on. There was a time when I didn't know how I was going to eat my next meal or pay my bills or where was I going to live next or how am I going to pay for this, how am I going to pay for that. Um, where I felt all alone and I felt scared and I felt weak. And I felt confused. I felt like I was losing my mind. And I could not understand um, what I was going through. But I knew I was going through something. And so um, when I came to know the Lord, he began to sort all that out. And he began to show me who he was for me. It took all the pain and suffering away that I had actually been causing myself. Um, not realizing that. Not realizing that I was holding on to things that I needed to give to God and not exalt higher than his ability and let him fix it. Let him lead me, you know, into all truth and lead me up out of the grief. You know, when you lose someone, it's devastating when you love someone. I know a lot of you, a good percentage of you have been through it. But um, God will show you how you can live on and how you can overcome and how you can have abundant life in this world and he will give you peace about that person and their life where they are with him at this time so that you will begin to get to know him and you will begin to get healed and brokenness and you will begin to feel the goodness of God all the time. The happiness will come back, the joy. Some of these things take time. I'm not saying it's supposed to take 20 years, but for me, that's what it took. I did not know the Lord. You know, when I came to know God, I was a mess. It took a while because uh, I still wanted to hold on. I didn't want to lay it down. And that's what I always said to him too. Well, you can't give me my mom back. But you know what he did? He gave me my mom back in so many ways. The Holy Spirit became my mother. And the Holy Spirit began to um, comfort me. And people came into my life that reminded me of my mom. Uh, people would give me things and do things for me that my mom would do. So, you know, God had a way of doing things that was I could have never understood on my own. I could have never um, 
you know, certain things like wildflowers, picking flowers. I used to, that's what, when I posted that online, um, I used to pick wildflowers for my mom, you know? And when I came here, I was struggling with coming here um, at times, you know, because I left my daughter and my grandchildren behind for now. Um, in, while I work out this situation with my dad and um, God had to give me peace in those places in those moments, those rocky roads, those places where I couldn't figure it out for myself, you know, where I, um, I didn't want to figure it out for myself. Um, so now I don't hold on to anger and bitterness. I don't blame God. I know that it's not God that's hurting me. It's God that's helping me. It's God that's carrying me. He made a way where there seemed to be no way. And there was absolutely no way in my mind that I could have um, done travel across the United States of America, interceding and praying for um, you know children from human trafficking to be rescued, and then seeing it, seeing the you know the rescue show up in the newspaper of the territory where I was just at, over and over again. You know, I mean that's huge to see things like that when you begin to see God move. Um, in greater aspects, once you start trusting him, you know, through you for other people, through prayers, it blows your mind because, and he's never, you'll never ever outgive him, you'll never ever upset him or disappoint him, you'll never discourage him, you'll never, you know, he is a perfect God, so, you know, um, he's not dominating you and trying to control you and um, get you to, you know, manipulate you to think how he thinks. He invites you to think, you know, because it, you will find that the more you get to know God and the truth that sets you free, the more you'll want to know the truth and the more he'll share with you. But he's he's a gentleman. There is no way that he is going to try to control your thoughts. There's no way that he is going to punish you. There is no way that he is going to um, cause you pain. There's no way that he is going to take things away from you. He'll hold things back sometimes just because he's trying to get a greater fruit out of you. And he want, he knows that the, there's more in you than you realize and he's trying to bring it out. But I will tell you this, when he gives you the desires of your heart, you will never be disappointed. You will be disappointed in this world, but you won't be disappointed with him. You will know that he's your father and that he loves you. And that he cares for you and he takes care of you. And he perfects that which concerns your heart. And that he's never killed, steal, or destroyed. That that is the work of the evil of this world. And yes, sometimes Satan, he's behind the evil. He, that's, that's his world and his kingdom. But God has made a way where there seems to be no way. And I don't care what your circumstances are. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what you, what you think that you can't come out of or overcome or can't be healed from. God will heal you. Jesus himself will um, manifest and show you who he is. It, you know, time and time again, he'll reveal to you in the word. He'll speak to you in the, in the quiet of the night. He'll wake you up and he'll give you dreams and visions. Uh, the Holy Spirit it will give you rest on all sides, will comfort you when your heart is broken. Um, you know, when you're falling to pieces and you can't go on, he'll be, the joy of the Lord will be your strength. He'll be the light into your path and a lamp into your feet. No, and no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And you know, if someone passes from, from this world that is close to you, they are in heaven with Jesus. And so it's hard for us to fathom that that could be any better than to be, than to be here with us. But it's a perfect world there. And that, I mean, why wouldn't you want someone to, um, why would you want someone to suffer um, in this world any more than they have to from tragedy and accidents and things, you know, if they were going to be paralyzed or they were being, you know, bedridden or they, you know, couldn't, um, couldn't speak or couldn't uh, walk or couldn't, you know, talk or uh, let's speak. But, you know, why would you want that for your loved one? Um, I, it was hard to lose my mom, but, you know, I watched my mother suffer with cancer for over 10 years. And um, that was her choice. She'd had enough. She didn't want to fight it anymore. You know, and it was a fight. Her life was a fight because she didn't know Christ. So, you know, a lot of what she went through was a fight for her. Um, the, the thing she experienced as a child, it was devastating. It was a fight. 
So I share all this with you because I want you to know how beautiful God really is and how what He, he has so much for you. You know, I find that it it's never ending. No matter what as shallow as I can be and you know, thinking you can't do this, you can't do that, he will outdo me any time. And just think when I think he's he's big, he's even bigger. You know, he never stops. And I even say that about finances and People struggle with that, to think of God like that. They think, oh, you shouldn't think about God about money. Well, I don't think about God about money. I think about God about prosperity. So I'm going to show you this picture as I'm filling it in with water. And you can see here that the, the rivers of living water are coming. They're, they're taking you over. They're coming down here, and they're taking you over. They're taking you over. And they're bringing healing to your heart, bringing healing to your mind, bringing healing to your body. Bringing healing to your finances, to your family, to your loved ones. And they've been giving you dreams and visions, and tonight you will rest, and you will you will have perfect peace on all sides. You will see that God is there for you. God does care for you. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. And the greatest thing that causes you the most stress is when you fight it. So we don't need to fight God. We can we can cause more suffering and struggling for ourselves than we need be. Surrender. Surrender the pain. Don't exalt it higher than who God can be for you. Give it to the Lord in prayer. Tell him. Tell him how you feel. He's spoken Job. Come, Job. Reason with me. You know, talk to me. Let me know. Let me know what you think and let me show you who I am for you. A lot of people have tried to make that out like a bad story like us saying, oh, you think you're so such and such, but let me show you. Well, you know, we have to begin to know when the Bible was written and how they spoke, even how they treated women and how they, you know, children's positions and, and, and the, the way the world was then when we're reading the Bible. Because like the King James was written, um, desired to be written by... Um, for a, a king, King James, and he had some people write it. It was inspired by the Holy Spirit, but they also added their own um, culture and way of speaking and thinking in there. That's why you see a lot of Bibles about him, he, you know. Um, God does not see male or female. God sees us all the same. Um, in heaven, that's the way it will be. Um, so, you know, and the, on this earth, that's, that's the way we, we need to look at it. We, are, we have him, we have female, and we have male, but we are equal. And we work together, we each have positions, you know. Like I said, the man is, is over the woman means the man is the protector. He's the guardian. He's, you know, he, he, is, he provides, but read Proverbs 31, that woman provided. She was a strong businesswoman entrepreneur. You know, you can read all through the Bible about women who prophesied and women who were, you know, did the work of Je that Jesus did. You know, it doesn't have anything to do with whether you're male or female, whether you have a degree or a title, whether you have a position, whether you went to school for it. Or, I mean, like art, I didn't go to school for it. And this is this is a prophetic art piece, but I have done some really great work um, that... Uh, I know it was the Holy Spirit that gave it to me. So I'm going to close for now. I want to close in prayer, close in song, and I want to let you know, be still. Be still, quiet your mind, rest. If it's artwork, if it's journaling, if it's gardening, if it's cooking, if it's photography, if it's writing, if it's a specific uh, genre of music, even if nobody likes it. <laughs> Whatever it is that will bring you to the place of relaxation or to begin to relax and just empty your mind. Empty your mind and say, God, show me who you are for me in this place. Reveal to me your truth. And you too will feel the presence of the Lord. I guarantee it. And you will begin to learn how to hear from God. And you will get resolution. You will get restoration. And you will get 
revivalized or they call uh, revivals you hear that all the time that's what they're talking about see the revival is already here when Jesus died and rose again the revival began and it hasn't ended revival begins in you so there's times when churches have greater moves of God and you see a greater revival but the revival of the Lord is a presence of the Lord that you receive more and more rest and peace inside of you and strength and joy and happiness and you can overcome anything in life no matter what you go through no matter what you're challenged by and I have been around the mountain many many times on things and I, I could give a list there's probably not too much I haven't been through uh, some my own choice, some circumstances, some learning, some just people, people, and because um, people can be um, when they're challenged or they feel they they step in fear and they can be um, they feel vulnerable and they can do mean things or say mean things, but it's our job to not take those things to heart. And test the spirit by the spirit understand that they're human too and um, that's why the word says forgive them for they do not know the Lord possibly they know the Lord but they might not know who the Lord is in that situation anyway I hope that you enjoyed tonight and I hope you got a taste of this prophetic art and those of you who want to try to paint or maybe there's those of you who are artists you know, that can have skills that I possibly don't have that, you know, this is, this is therapy for you. But everything that is created, that is wonderful and beautiful, is created by God. Art, music, the sound of the waves of the ocean, the sounds of the birds chirping, the, the, the colors that you see in nature and the different flowers and the greens and the purples. Even purple is royalty in the Bible. Um, everything has its meaning and it, its energy. There's energy in plants. There's energy in, in, um, in the air. There's energy in fire. There's energy in water. Um, that's for another time. But I will tell you this. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, where would I be? Amen? So I ask you now, be still. Take some time. Find out what your, your if you call it love language, I guess, where the Lord is and how um, he speaks to you. And keep seeking him. Keep seeking him in that place. Keep seeking him and you will hear his voice and you will get direction and instruction. Write it down, 21 day journaling to freedom. That's what I do. Spend time with the Lord every day. Write it down, make it plain. He gives me scriptures to, to go by um, and they come to pass. I see it happen.
Father, thank you for tonight. Thank you, Father, for opening up this door to painting prophetically online. Um, I'm looking forward to more. I'm looking forward to more. I'm asking you, Lord God, give me the wisdom beyond my understanding that I may know you and acknowledge the truth that you desire to share with people and continue to touch the people's hearts that watch this video, Father God, through this painting. Father God, open up their hearts and minds to trust you and be still. See you next Tuesday night, Facebook Live. You are blessed and you shall overcome.